The Biotech DLC in RimWorld is arguably the best DLC we have in RimWorld. We have the Mechanator stuff, and we have the Sangophage stuff, as we can see with Jezebel. And we have the Genetic stuff, which we'll be using on one of these lucky prisoners at some point. All of these things we'll be attempting to do this episode, which is going to be great fun. <laughs> <laughs> this will either completely ruin me or it'll ruin my game. I can't work out which one it is. It's going to be easy. It's going to be great fun. And we're also going to be working on the quarry stuff again. I'm going to turn it back on and let Merv go to work on that. So if you enjoy any of today's episode or excited to see all of these fantastic things we might get up to, consider liking, subscribing, and make sure you tell your mum about it. And first, I need to address that we currently have a civil war going on on our map almost constantly. Uh, the Immortals mod seems to be a little bit sort of... Uh, <laughs> Crazy. Uh, everybody on the map is kind of being re revived randomly. Uh, we have one of these spider things that resurrected itself a while ago that's just kind of sitting. And we have Chonk here that's just been resurrected as well. So the first job we need to do is destroy the ancient Exo Strider midsection. So I'm going to get Rico and Benito just to obliterate it, honestly. And then who do we, we going to have as our Mechanator? I feel like Sam. Sam should be our Mechanator. He kind of doesn't really do much. He's our combat specialist. Yeah, he's kind of smart. <laughs> I think that suits him quite nicely, honestly. And anyway, the Mechanoid Transponder is available. So let's grab Sam and get him to decrypt the Transponder. Sam has decoded the Transponder and we have the Mechanator Wreck. You've decrypted a ancient Transponder revealing the location of a Mechanoid ship in orbit. The ship is badly damaged, but you signal it to land nearby. So it will land, we'll get the Mechanator, and it will drop three Scorchers and four Militors for us to destroy. Easy peasy. Let's accept that. And there is the Mechanator ship with the Mechanoids inside. Hello, my... That's not meant to happen. That's not meant to happen. You're not meant to be immortal. <laughs> oh, no, it's broken. <laughs> oh, no. Everybody, get up here. We need to capture Bragu. Bragu's own Mechanoids have turned against him. <laughs> God. Oh dear. There we are. Oh, he died. Whoops. <laughs> so he resurrected as an immortal, then died again. Um, okay, no worries. Were you any good? I could potentially capture this guy because he will come back. He's all right. He's not too bad. Let's grab Sam and get him to extract the mechlick before the body burns. And Harry's died. Oh dear. <laughs> Oh, Harry. <laughs> Harry tried to fight the uh, big spider by himself and died. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Whoops. Well, anyway, Sam, get that mech link. There it is. And install the mech link and become the mechanator. There he is. Mech link has been installed into Sam and we now have a mechanator. Nice. So I guess now we need to go save. Uh, well, we not save Harry, but we need to go resurrect him. <laughs> And a pods have arrived and a constructor has decided to link itself to Sam. At the moment, we can't unfortunately maintain any mechanoids because we don't have the technology for it. But I guess it's a nice thing anyway. There you go. And Harry's been brought back to life. Welcome back, Harry. And a group social fight has broken out. Benito is starting a fight with John. Benito is our demon with chainsaw hands and is 58 years old. And John is a three-year-old child. I, I don't even want to say who's going to win this one. Funnily enough... Neither of them, you know? Who wins in a fight between a three-year-old and a 58-year-old? We have a trade caravan coming in. All type animals caravan instability. <laughs> God. From the civilian industrial conglomerate. Oh, hello. Those animals definitely look like instability. Christ. <laughs> Let's trade them and see what they've got for us. So, yeah, they have got a lot of animals these people have. Jesus Christ. A bear horse stallion interesting i mean i could i could buy some animals you know we, we could do with another colony mascot you know i've decided on two colony mascots from these people a boo man and a ground offalo um, and i'm gonna sell them just a few bits and pieces here and there and make some money off them so a boo man what does a boo man look when it's a hut look like when it's a <laughs> the boo man it's a boo man a boo man <laughs> god Oh, uh, why does he look so sad as well? Poor guy. What do we do with a boo man? Then? They do nothing apart from they talk to people and they refuse to let anyone milk them. That's understandable, you know. I respect that. 
Um, and then a ground buffalo looks pretty cool, actually, to be honest. Um, and these will produce milk and will and do mining for us. Very nice. I mean, these two as our sort of colony hybrid mascots, I'm quite happy with, you know? Right, and we have now more or less completely finished our quarrying room. At the moment, it's very ugly. It's just, just like your mother. But <laughs> it does the job, and I now feel comfortable that we can re-enable the quarrying. It's been a few episodes since we've been doing anything with it. But with that, the, we're there. Enough that I'm happy. Um, I kind of organized the junk here, there, and everywhere around it so it looks a little bit more thematic. Cole has finally given up. It's taken her a long time of being massively depressed and just angry all the time, but she's fed up with civilization and has given up. She's also taken her clothes off. Fair enough. I think this is the second time she's given up, actually. <laughs> I think this is the second time. Cole, when I learn how to do brain surgery, I'll finally be able to make you happy again. But for the time being... You're just gonna have to kind of suffer. And we have a new recruit, Cholke. Finally, we are working on emptying out our prison. Now, Cholke, who were you? Plants. Ah. Ooh, plants. Ah, uh, the one thing I said we weren't gonna do anymore. Of course you were. But you're also okay at shooting. Okay. Okay. Not the worst comments to be picking up. When we get back into planting and things, Cholke will be very handy. But for the time being, you're basically going to be a glorified cleaner. And another new recruit, Loser, has joined us. Welcome, Loser. Another one that we'd had before, but then it switched away from us. Um, yeah, fair enough. You'll be on intellectual and then kind of doing some other things at the same time. And Amelia is now in labor. She's about to give birth. And as a reminder, I have absolutely no idea what the genes are for her baby. No idea. Jezebel's back up for it, specifically for the occasion, taking her into the hospital. Thankfully, I cleaned it as well, actually. That's very good as well. Let's gather for the childbirth. And the doctor is apparently Harry. Why is Harry that color? Hmm. Strange. <laughs> and obviously, we're going to have Riku, the husband, and Jezebel and Merv are going to be there as well as our most important colonists. Let's have a look. Amelia, congratulations on giving birth and all that jazz. And the childbirth has been cancelled. Sorry? <laughs> How do you just cancel a childbirth? How does that happen? <laughs> childbirth has begun again. Why, sh why, why on earth can you cancel childbirth? That just makes no sense at all. A sick childbirth, of course. Ch Amelia gave birth to a baby, but unfortunately the baby is sick. Okay, that's kind of annoying. The baby has been given the temporary name of Baby Hardy. You can change it until one day after the birth. Let's name the baby, and we're going to... Frederica. Frederica's a fantastic name. Uh, last name Hardy, yeah, all right. Frederica's a fantastic name, by the way. Not uh, just, like, the Hardy bit. Frederica, perfect. Frederica, let's have a look at you. So you are theoretically a hybrid. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> you are awful. Slow runner, cold tolerant, and heat tolerant, and strong melee damage. All right. Poor shooting and poor intellectual. You have a Hulk body, and you're fat, and you have a heavy jaw. So you're basically, you're very large and stupid. Oh, uh, we've just made ourselves a, a bad, big, fat, ugly baby that's ill. Fantastic. Oh, um, new lovers as well. Cholke and Sam want to sleep together. So we have a 50-year-old, 51-year-old man and a 48-year-old fire-spewing impid. R sexy. Harry seems to have changed color. Uh, I know he died, but he's come back to life and he's now all crispy. Um, is this really Harry? I don't know, but it's not really ideal, is it? So now that we're getting back into the quarrying stuff and working on improving our colony wealth again, which is just what I really wanted. I'm going to start working on the recycling things as well. I've now set up these smelters in here to, to actually recycle things. I've got two tailoring benches here ready to be doing recycling as well. And as research uh, has been finished for this one as well, I am aiming towards getting towards getting some form of recycling in that form as well. Uh, and then once we've done that, we can start potentially crafting and things. We can now start working as well on... Jezebel's torpor room, her death rest room, the area that she'll be learning how to sleep better. <laughs> uh, we have all these different things that we have access to within the Sangophage expanded mod, I want to call it. The torpor accelerators, we have blood amplifiers, all these exciting things. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of chuck down a couple of each so I can see what they do. Well, I'd love to chuck down a couple of each of everything, but unfortunately we don't actually have 
access to a lot of them because they require blood panks. So what we need to do in this association to having her own little torpor room, we're going to have to build a separate room off to the side specifically for blood bags. Um, and by blood bags, I mean humans that I can just sort of suck off all the time. Oh, no. <laughs> Human people and things that I can extract the blood out of whenever I want. Shit. <laughs> Marriage is on as well. Jezebel Cook, will you marry me? Jezebel and Merv are going to get married. They're sunbathing, cloud watching on a pile of piss and shit, and Merv pops the question. It's just so romantic. So we've just picked, mined up a weapon, a excellent warm tech rocket launcher. Look at how big this gun is. I don't think I've ever seen a weapon in RimWorld this size. Uh, it can only be wielded by giants, Herculean, or war caskets. John, can you can you equip it? Oh, God, he can. Oh, Jesus Christ. As a reminder, John is a three-year-old ogre who we could give this weapon to. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. We've just created the strongest three-year-old in existence. Ooh, and we have managed to get ourselves microelectronics as a research come up. Not sure what else we'll be able to get. Uh, the auto bong, of course, just what we wanted. Other than what we've got now, we haven't actually found any research yet for the mechanator stuff, which is why we haven't done anything with it this episode, unfortunately, and only found the research for sanguifage things. Kind of a shame. We uh, we started it. We're in process of it. We're just not there yet. And a new, another new recruit, Elan. Elan has joined us, and Elan was extremely good crafting, art, mining, construction, shooting, melee. A very good character to pick up. But now we have an issue. <laughs> we have too many colonists. We just have too many. We we are asking for trouble. What I I what is our wealth at now? Ah, oh, two million. We've hit the two million mark. I'm. I'm not going to say that the next raid we're going to get is going to be game-changing, but it's not going to be good. That's for sure. And none of these colonists are particularly good. We've not got any research to get them all kitted out. We've not even got machining yet. Oh, uh, this isn't good. This is bad. I think, I think we're going to have to get rid of some people, honestly. Oh, look what Sam's doing. Sam feigns attention towards the Boo Man, number one. I love it. I love when we just give the boo man the attention, you know? <laughs> I'm just not going to be able to get over that. The boo man, you know? I've also now started work on two new rooms as well. So alongside the drain cast casket room that we're going to have at the top here, we're going to have an extra room specifically for bionics because they're overflowing into our main storage room, which is not ideal. And I'm going to build a specific new recreation and eating area as well just so we can try and make this area look just look a little bit nicer and make people slightly happier. Oh, and a human revenge. Kakol is attacking due to a botched taming effort. That's not good. That is not good at all. Kakol, I accidentally gave her an inbuilt, inbuilt charge sniper combat module, which means that she just has an inbuilt sniper rifle. Uh, so funnily enough, she's slightly more powerful than you might expect. Thankfully, we have Haratu the most powerful thing you've ever seen. And hopefully he can just deal with this. Right, Kakol is now down. Jezebel's come out here and dealt with the problem. Oh dear, oh dear. So Sam and Haratu both have five hours left. Oh, of course, absolutely classic. And anyway, we have actually managed to upgrade our research room. It's taken quite a while because I hadn't realized I'd actually researched it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to call this episode here, and it has been a fantastic success today. We've actually managed to get most of the base to a point where it's not just the basics. It's kind of starting to get upgraded properly. Uh, the recycling room has been finished. We've got a school over here. We've actually started working on the sanguifage stuff, and we're just being restricted now by people and not having any blood bags. You know how it is. Next episode, though, well, I'm hoping to absolutely blitz through research. I think I'm going to let rip on research and just go for select research automatically and just let Benito go wild and see how much we can get and see what we can do by the end of next episode, that is. And next episode, uh, well, hopefully we can start on the mech tech stuff. But most importantly, today, do you know what we did today? We got John a big old gun. A little, a little John has got a big old shooter now and has now become probably the scariest three-year-old in existence. So if you have enjoyed today's episode and are excited to see the stories of Frederica and John, consider liking, subscribing, 
and make sure you tell your mum about it. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.